Hello and welcome to the episode 285 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today, we'll touch on several live events, the first time of a Beatles record on the charts, and the beginning of the official recordings of Rubber Soul, among other things. On the 12th of October 1960, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed yet another night at the Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, West Germany. On this date, in 1962, the Love Me Do single, with P.S. I Love You on the B-side, was featured in the record retailer magazine chart at number 49. Naturally, with Love Me Do being the first record released by the Beatles, it was their first time in the charts, a feat worth noticing. That night, after the usual engagement at the Cavern Club during the lunchtime office break, the Beatles took part to a special event at the Tower Ballroom in Wallasey, the most ambitious promotional event put together by their manager, Brian Epstein. A five-hour-and-a-half, twelve-band bill, topped by Little Richard. Needless to say, the evening was a huge success, with Epstein rebooking Richard for another event, scheduled for the 28th of October at the Empire Theatre in Liverpool. The well-informed say that the Beatles were overwhelmed by the experience of being second in a bill topped by Little Richard, and equally overwhelmed, but in another way, to meet Pete Best backstage. Their former drummer was now engaged with one of the other bands, Lee Curtis and the All Stars. Moving forward another two years, in 1964 the Beatles had a day off from their British tour and might have been attending a studio session in Abbey Road, during which producer George Martin and engineer Norman Smith produced stereo and mono mixes of She's a Woman and a mono mix of 8 days a week, working from 10 to 10.30 am and from 2.30 to 3 pm. On the 12th of October 1965, the Beatles officially started working on their new album, with a recording session at the EMI Studios in London. There was so little time and so much pressure to compose an entire album of new music that John Lennon later admitted to rely on other records for inspiration. In Run For Your Life, recorded today in five takes, between 2.30 and 7.00 pm, for example, he lifted two lines from Elvis Presley's Baby Let's Play House. After the rhythm track had been nailed down, George and John recorded electric guitar overdubs, and George, John and Paul overdubbed lead and backing vocals, completing the work on the song. At 7.00 pm, rather than having a break for dinner, the band kept recording, with another song by Lennon, tentatively called This Bird Has Flown. If you recall, John had first played this song to George Martin on the 26th of January, while on holiday, see episode 26 of What A Fab Day for that. After spending some time rehearsing the material, the band recorded the first version of the song in one take plus overdubs, a version different enough from the one that ended up in the Rubber Soul LP to merit inclusion in the Anthology 2 album in 1996. The song was the first instance of George Harrison's sitar playing, ending up in a Beatles recording. The band stopped working on the track at 11.00 pm, leaving the studio. In 1967, with the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour footage going on at Norman's Film Productions, the Beatles kept working on new music. Between 2.30 and 8.00 pm, It's All Too Much was mixed in mono at the Lane Leah Studios, twice. At 6.30 pm, leaving the mixing to the studio personnel to complete, the Fabs moved to the EMI Studios for a session originally booked at the Olympic Sound Studios. For the first time, it's John Lennon holding the reins of the session, producing it. Blue Jay Way was edited and mixed in mono. Then, accordionist Shirley Evans and percussionist Reg Whale recorded a Lennon-McCartney instrumental titled Shirley's Wild Accordion, 
with an arrangement by Mike Linder, with Paul McCartney on maracas and Ringo Starr on drums. The rhythm track took 10 takes to be completed. After that, more accordion was overdubbed on the piece, and the song was mixed in mono three times. The idea was to include Shirley's wild accordion as incidental music in Magical Mystery Tour, but the instrumental wasn't used, even if Shirley Evans did appear in the final edit of the original release of the film. Before closing the episode with another mammoth session for the White Album, let me remind you that if you want to find out how you can support this podcast or my other music-related projects, you can check out www.simonmas.com support. There's a lot you can do even without spending a penny, and there's the deluxe version of this podcast on sale, too. Thank you for any support. On the 12th of October 1968, from 7 p.m. to 5.45 a.m., Mono and stereo mixes of Everybody's Got Something to Hide Except Me and My Monkey, Mother Nature's Son and Obladi Oblada, a stereo mix of Helter Skelter and a mono mix of Long 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 were completed at the EMI Studios in Abbey Road. More recording and gigging tomorrow for whoever wants to join me for the new episode. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.